Good morning and welcome to another edition of our Community Affairs Show here at Radio 1 DC Stations. I'm your host, Ebony McMorris, your News and Community Affairs Director. Well, who cannot notice the uh, large plot of land that's being built upon uh, the National Harbor? And of course, we owe that to MGM Resorts. It's a $25 billion project, 23-story building, 2,300-room luxury hotel, a casino. That's just one of the many things that's going to be on this plot of land. 3,600 slots, 160 table games, so much surrounding this. And here to talk about that, and more importantly, the commitment that MGM Resorts has to the community is Phyllis James. Uh, She is the Chief Diversity Officer officer for MGM Resorts International. Good morning. Good morning, Ebony. How are you? So good to have you and I've got lots of questions for you. Uh, thanks for coming in, first of all. Um, well, thank you for having me. We're absolutely. really pleased to be here to speak with you today. You know, MGM Resorts has a huge commitment to Prince George's County. And as the Chief Diversity Officer, there are several initiatives I know that have been laid forth for the community that I really want to delve into today. Sure. I'm happy to uh, respond to whatever your questions are, but let me just say at the outset that when we establish a new gaming resort uh, in a new location, we see ourselves as joining the community Mm -hmm. in which the resort is going to be located. So it's not just a matter of building a physical building for us. Of course, that's very important, but we seek to become a part of the fabric of the community. Absolutely. Now, you are responsible for the diversity inclusion initiative, as well as the company's philanthropy programs and diversity and community engagement department. How is MGM committed to diversity in this community? Well, um, we are committed to diversity uh, throughout uh, our business operations. And first and foremost, uh, for us, uh, diversity and inclusion are a way of doing business. It's also a way of life. Uh, People are the lifeblood of our business. So first and foremost, uh, our employees are diverse. Um, I think that the statistic is over 64% of our workforce is diverse today at MGM Resorts. And that's including all the locations in which we do business. So first and foremost, uh, it's important how we treat our people. Uh, It's important how we motivate our people. It's important what kind of standard we set for how we want our employees to treat our customers. And that leads us to the second leg of diversity. Uh, We have guests coming to visit with us from around the world. And the same is going to be true at Prince George's County. We're right here uh, at Washington, D.C., which is the center uh, in many ways of the world. And we're hoping to make it the hospitality and gaming center uh, of this region. And knowing that we have customers Uh, of all sorts from all over the globe makes diversity and inclusion very important in terms of the customers that we seek to have. Likewise, in terms of who we do business with, our business partners, Mm -hmm. it's very important for us to make sure that there is diversity in our supply chain. So in terms of people that we seek to do business with, we want to make sure that diverse businesses are a part of the economy of our company. So whether it's in building a new resort, such as we're doing now in Prince George's County, or whether it is in operations, which will take place once our facility is built, it is important for us to have diverse businesses among our business partners. What are you doing to help ensure that that happens? Recently, there's been some backlash, and I believe it's not because the project is here. It's because with Prince George's County, we've seen a lot of projects built, and the issue of minority contracting always comes up. And so many of the residents, businesses, and and, um, 
uh, contractors want to know how you are ensuring that that, ha- that, that happens. Well, as I said, um, it is important for us to include uh, diverse businesses, and that includes not just contractors, but many other types of professional service providers in the new construction projects uh, that we undertake. That has been our history. Uh, If you look at our track record uh, in Las Vegas, in Detroit, Michigan, in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, that has been the case, and it is the case now in Prince George's County. So we have a very strong uh, team of people who are working to make outreach to the surrounding uh, community in Prince George's County and the region, uh, seeking qualified diverse businesses who are interested in being a part of our project. In saying that, Uh, I think it's important to realize that we obviously are not going to be able to engage every business that seeks to be a part of the project. So our goal is to make sure that we not only live up to the diversity commitments that we've made to the state of Maryland and to Prince George's County, and in the case of the county, they're outlined in the Community Benefits Agreement, but we seek to establish exceed those commitments because that is the MGM way. We don't just do enough to get by. Uh, We consider ourselves to be excellent in whatever we pursue, and that means uh, going the extra mile to make sure that we do the absolute best. So we have people who are uh, making outreach. Uh, Whiting and Turner, who is our general contractor in the project, had been with us in many consultations on diversity outreach. In fact, Whiting and Turner is doing periodic community outreach sessions to local and diverse businesses who want to work in our project. We just had one last Friday, as a matter of fact, that I attended. That was on April 24. And the next one is going to be on May 15 between the hours of 1 and 3 p.m. at the Clarion Hotel at 6400 Oxen Hill Road uh, in Prince George's County. And the purpose of these is to give information about the project, what's uh, coming out in terms of bid packages, and there are people who are uh, on site who can give contractors uh, specific information about upcoming bid packages. So we have a very robust team of people who are available to take questions, to give guidance on when uh, bid notices are coming out, when bid packages are due, what you need to do to complete bid packages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's in addition, of course, to our basic website, which is www.mgmnationalharbor.com. And if you go to that central website and click on construction, that will take you over to information about the construction project. But that's very important to us. And as you say, we are um, making sure that when we are making selections, for uh, who will uh, actually perform the bid uh, work, Uh, we are trying to ensure that qualified, competitive, diverse businesses are among those who are selected. So let's talk about that community benefits agreement for those who don't quite understand that. Explain that, and then after that I want to talk about the actual first report. Yes. So, um, it, which, it, as is very common uh, it, when uh, communities have major new businesses coming in uh, to set up a, a new facility, the host community is desirous, uh, and rightly so, of making sure that local residents will be employed both during the project and during operations that local businesses uh, will be utilized both in construction and during operations. And uh, Prince George's County uh, has done the same. 
So the county negotiated with uh, MGM National Harbor what's called uh, a host community agreement. In this case, it's called the Community Benefits Agreement. And it sets up certain goals for uh, use of Prince George's County residents in the construction workforce, use of Prince George's County businesses, whether they're based in the county or located in the county, uh, in construction for use of those businesses and diverse businesses in construction and operations. And uh, those, there are some other commitments also laid out uh, in the benefits agreement. But when we're talking about the construction uh, goals for workforce and for business utilization, in the community benefits agreement, uh, that's what we're talking about. And likewise, the state of Maryland uh, in our licensing uh, agreement uh, has required uh, that we meet certain uh, diversity goals in our construction as well. And so what percentage of that in that agreement goes to minority contractors? So in the Community Benefits Agreement uh, with Prince George's County, MGM committed uh, to uh, using uh, uh, minority businesses to achieve 30% of the total dollars spent on construction. And there are various categories of diverse businesses that are specified but that is one commitment. Another commitment that we made in that agreement is that in the use of county-based business enterprises, we would use, uh, we would make sure that county-based businesses participated in at least 12% of the total dollars spent on construction. Uh, that is, those are two of the goals. And the next one, which is equally important for the project, has to do with who actually are the construction workers on the site. And uh, the community benefits agreement says that uh, at least 20% of all of the man hours that are worked on the project should be performed by residents of Prince George's County. So let's talk about the first quarterly report that was filed on April 15th and go over some of those numbers. How is the project faring when it comes to your commitment? Well, I'm really happy to say, uh, because we've worked very hard to achieve this, that we have exceeded our first two goals uh, in terms of use of minority business enterprises. Uh, 31% of the dollars spent on construction during 2014 were uh, spent with minority businesses. That's against the 30% goal. And in terms of dollars uh, spent with county-based enterprises, uh, 16% of our construction dollars spent in 2014 were spent with those businesses against a goal of 12%. And then in terms of worker hours on the project, our goal was that at least 20% of the worker hours would be performed by Prince George's County residents. And I'm happy to say that in 2014, 19% of the more than 96,000 labor hours on the project were performed by Prince George's County residents. So I would say, all in all, uh, we are doing uh, a tremendous job in meeting and exceeding the county's goals. Well, there you have it. 
In studio this morning, Phyllis James of MGM Resorts. She's the Chief Diversity Officer for MGM Resorts International. We're talking about uh, the project MGM National Harbor that's coming to the area. When are we? Uh, when is the project expected to be completed? The project is expected to open uh, second half of 2016. Okay. And if you drive by the site, you can literally see it rising you out can't of the miss ground. It. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have many construction cranes out there. Talk about how, because I've, I've done a few other interviews about the harbor, and I always get corrected when I say the casino is coming, and it's like it's not a, cause not just a casino, and it's the experience, and it's well, a resort. Well, that's that's a very important point, and we we're constantly having to correct people about that. Uh, we consider that we are building a destination resort, mm-hmm. and because of the prominence of its physical locale, it's being built on a hill there at National Harbor. Um, we think we're building a shining jewel on a hill wow. that will be a magnet for uh, the entire region. So we will have a 300 suite um, hotel, and that's very important. Uh, there will be gaming, but gaming will not be the only form of entertainment. Uh, we will have a theater that seats approximately, uh, I think it's 3,000 seats that will be in the theater. So we will have entertainment there. Wow. Uh, we will have restaurants, which range from casual to fine dining. We will have meeting space. Uh, we will also have a luxury spa and salon for those who want to partake of that i personally i'll do that uh, i'll do the (laughs) spa every day if i could but and uh, we will have uh, retail uh, as and of course uh, a major part of uh, our facilities is always adequate parking so that which is right on site so that people don't have to go to another location for parking. So we are going to be offering the total package here, and it would be very incorrect to say that we are building just a casino. That's why I didn't say it. (laughs) Let's talk about um, the the community surrounding that area, because of course with a large and beautiful facility that is going to be built, the profits will be will will be great. So how is that going to? Are there any plans to um, work with uh, the surrounding community or putting some of that money back into the community, investing into the people? Well, um, let's talk about that for a minute because uh, I do want to make sure that people understand that um, uh, we uh, will be heavily taxed. <laughs> by the state of Maryland in the form of their gaming tax. So people should understand that uh, in addition to all of the other taxes that normal businesses pay, such as payroll tax, property tax, uh, those normal taxes, we will pay all of those taxes plus a gaming tax. So people should understand from the very beginning that Uh, we will be paying our fair share of taxes in the state of Maryland. We will also be uh, employing 3,600 people in 100 different uh, classifications of jobs at this facility. So that is quite an investment in our community. And likewise, we have a commitment to using uh, local and diverse businesses to procure services and goods from uh, during the course of our regular business operations. So taking all of that together, I think that represents a huge investment in Prince George's County and the state of Maryland. But beyond that, uh, our company uh, is a giving company. We believe that it is part of our DNA uh, to engage with our communities. It has been part of the character of our company since its founding uh, by the MGM founder, Mr. Kirk Kikorian, 
and we have tried uh, ever since to live up to that. We give money uh, to our host communities, both through the company itself and through our employee foundation that funnels uh, uh, dollars donated by employees to nonprofits of their choice. And we encourage all of our employees to give, whether it's 50 cents, whether it's a dollar, whether it's $10, whether it's 100 whatever you can afford. Because we consider it a privilege to do business, and it's a privilege to be employed here. And we feel an obligation to share with those who are not in the same position of privilege. And likewise, we encourage our employees to do community service. It's not enough to just be in the community. To be a part of it, you also have to give some of your time, give some of your skill back to the community. And we encourage our executives as well as our frontline employees to get involved in the community. Whatever is your passion or desire, we say outside of your regular work, do something to help uplift the community in which we are located. I think that's amazing because the biggest thing you know that I'm hearing as you're talking is not just about business, it's about relationship. Yes. And a lot of times when you go into areas anywhere in Maryland, D.C. and Virginia, and you talk about the business, I think the community is wanting to build relationships. Well, I think that um, uh, at the end of the day, uh, businesses are only made up of people. And the business is what the people are who run them and who work in them. And as people, uh, we want to have relationships with the other people who are surrounding us. And let's consider most of our workforce will be drawn from the local community and the local region. So why wouldn't we want to have relationships with our surrounding community? Likewise, uh, the public education institutions, the health institutions, the uh, environmental sustainability institutions, the institutions that support the broad social infrastructure, such as services, such as hunger relief, such as affordable housing, uh, such as cultural arts, all of those institutions contribute to the quality of life in that community. And it's important for us to have uh, strong institutions in the community because that makes for a strong employee base. And you know the old saying, what's good for employees is good for our guests and Absolutely. it's good for business. So it's, you know, it's kind of a circle that um, just kind of goes round and round uh, and feeds on itself. So that's how we look at a community in a very holistic way. And we try to build that into our work culture. This isn't a place to just come and do a few hours and get a paycheck. Um, we hope that we are encouraging our employees to be a part of a full and rich employee culture at MGM and that our culture in turn spills over into and is connected with our surrounding communities. We're coming to the end. I have a few more minutes for this interview, but I want to get in a few things. One, for people who are listening and they um, have a business and they want to become involved. So are there... Um, any dates or anything that people should know about, whether it's the bidding process or application process um, for MGM uh, resorts for this National Harbor Project? So uh, I mentioned um, just a few moments ago our uh, website uh, at uh, MGM National Harbor. Um, you can go to that website and link on construction and find out about construction opportunities. Anybody who's interested uh, in doing business on the construction project really ought to go 
to the next Whiting and Turner community outreach session. Again, that's on May 15 at 1 o'clock p.m. at the Clarion Hotel, 6400 Oxen Hill Road. Likewise, um, we will, uh, when uh, that rolls out, we'll be making a very strong push to let people know about upcoming employment opportunities when we are ready uh, to start that process. And we'll be sure to come back to Radio 1 and any other place we can to let people know of job opportunities. But I want to say something to our listeners, Ebony, uh, about employment that people ought to be thinking about right now before we actually start a formal hiring process. And uh, I think it's important for people to know that uh, MGM Resorts and MGM National Harbor are regulated gaming companies. And so as a gaming employer, we uh, have to meet uh, special regulations about who can work in our facility that other employers do not have to meet. And many of our employees will have to receive what's considered to be an occupational license. So I want everybody to understand that there will be criminal history background check, there will be uh, credit history background check, and uh, those are stringent requirements that we don't have the ability to waive for all employees. So I think people now, uh, if you have issues that perhaps need to be addressed or cleared up, uh, or if you are trying to get uh, certain criminal histories expunged in terms of record, I would take this opportunity now to prepare for that so that you will be able to participate in the competitive employment process. Likewise, if you're trying to finish degrees or training programs to boost those qualifications, do it now. And where can people go to find out any current opportunities? There is a link on our website, the National Harbor website, to what's called the Talent Network. And if you click on that, you will be able to find out about current opportunities and potential upcoming opportunities. Anything you'd like to leave with our audience, Phyllis? First, we are extremely grateful to the state of Maryland and Prince George's County for uh, voting to allow this seventh license to be established. And we are very thankful that we were selected to develop here. We think that it is going to be an outstanding addition to uh, Prince George's County and the state, as well as the region. And it is our intent to do everything humanly possible to thank everyone for our having been given this tremendous opportunity. And we hope that when it's all built, everybody will come on over and have a great time. Phyllis, thank you. To our audience, thank you for tuning in to this edition of our Community Affairs Show here Radio 1 DC Stations. I've enjoyed being your host. Until next week, be safe.